writing Little Girl Blue was sort of a, a journey. I started writing the book earlier in 2018, I would say, around about the time while I was finishing high school. And I think a lot of the times when I begin collections, they don't start out as collections. Like I don't um, give myself an ultimatum of being like, oh, I'm going to write a collection. It just sort of happens. So it's like a, a period in my life where I'm thinking about a particular type of topic and thinking about particular type of things and, and and just kind of like going around in my head about specific you know things that I want to talk about my very first collection that I that I like finished isn't even really about me it's like my, it was just a period of my life where I was I went for six months just thinking about this one thing and looking at it from all different sorts of angles don't you know I'm talking about a revolution that sounds like a whisper. I had a conversation with my dad about a month before all of this happened. And um, I'm not going to go into all the details of exactly what we were talking about, but it was uh, sort of somewhere along the lines of, well, dad, what if I'm not that? Or what if I don't become that what if i don't do that anymore and he said something to me um he said well that's okay <laughs> he said obviously as your father i have all of these hopes and dreams and plans for you that like you know as a parent i'm like i would be comfortable if you were to do one two three or four but at the end of the day it is it's your life and whatever you do it's okay so long as you're safe so long as you're happy, so long as you, you know, take care of your brother, take care of yourself, whole self, your mind, body, and spirit, and, you know, you, you stay close to God. I released a smaller collection on Medium and Wattpad called 3002 Synonyms for Goodbye before officially releasing Little Girl Blue, and I thought it was a good way to start off an official publishing journey, I suppose, because I was like, I'm gonna allow people into my soul and to just kind of let them see who RB is. And that's it's kind of like what I do in Little Girl Blue. It follows this idea of this young boy, you know, from I often speak about the nursery rhyme, which inspired the title of the book. I remember around about the time where I was finishing up the poems, like the, the finishing up putting all the poems together for Little Girl Blue, I listened to this nursery rhyme, I stumbled upon it, and I was like, this is, this is basically how I feel. The first poem in the collection is called A Sad Poem, and it's really me saying, F you. It's really me saying, allow me to breathe, allow me to figure out this life thing, allow me to be sad in this moment, allow me to write about sad things because this is my world and I want to write about how I can not walk in the room and tell people that these are the things that are going in, in your mind and that's pretty much what the first poem and then eventually the rest of the collection is really about. It's just about a state of acceptance of like, I'm not okay. But in this space right now, it's okay to not be okay. And what I'm going to do for myself is that I'm going to sit with myself and do a sort of self-inspection of like, why am I not okay? What is it about my life that makes me sad? Why can't I be happy in this moment right now? And what can I change about that? And how... The only way that you can change about it is to identify it first. So that's kind of like what Little Girl Blue hopes to do. It's like, let's talk about things that make me, make us happy about life. I realized I was captured when my head became heavy every time I thought of you. Trying to recall a memory I hold, a time we were together. But what's the name of an unconceived child? And who is it that names a thing? How do you call it? Because a child is only a thing before it is a child, a dot, a speck, the specks of dust that brought this world to life, they hold me in contempt. Silent. Silent. 
glaring at a photograph, twiddling my thumb. Sort of like came to realize that it's okay to be in that space sometimes. It's okay to just allow yourself to experience things. And sometimes you feel like singing, sometimes you just want to be quiet. And I think I felt that the world gives us so much pressure to sing all the time. I'm going to continue with this analogy. The world gives us so much pressure to sing and dance and be great things. You know, we're also like striving to be great things, to be amazing and rich and successful and inspiring. And even me doing this is just part of that drive, part of that need to be something amazing. And it's great. And if you have that drive, if you have that thing, it's, it's amazing. But like sometimes you find yourself in little moments where you just want to be like the little boy blue at the back of the barn, fast asleep. And it's like, I think my book, what I really wanted to say is I'm taking this moment to, to go to the back of the world. I, yes, I have to go, you know, herd the kettle. I have to go feed the chickens. I have to go make a living. But <laughs> give me a moment to take care of my mind and heart and soul and sleep. And I hope that it encourages people to reflect on their lives and reflect on things that don't make sense reflect on things that don't make you happy yes you were thrown into this world of expectation maybe you're born into a family of doctors or born into a family of scientists and now you have all this pressure that's telling you now you have to be something great because everybody in your family is something great so you're like <sighs> it's not even that you don't want to be that it's just that in this moment right now you're just like the, your attention is just on issues that the world seems to ignore like i'm happy at my weight or i'm i don't want to necessarily change this about myself in order to become a supermodel you know and it's like it's, it's the book is about taking that time and saying well this is wrong and that's okay i'm going to allow it to be wrong and rest <laughs> i'm going to rest so, go ahead. Go ahead, little girl blue. Take your time and just rest. Off by heart, I know I am rotten by my lust for wealth, my adoration for those who are bent and broken and searching. Sometimes when you look at the, the grandness of it all, it, it's pretty tiring. And that's kind of like the, the, the idea that I was kind of going for. It's like, tired you know like I'm, I'm tired I, I have all of these things that I have to be but on the process or on the way I'm noticing everything that's wrong with our world and it's it's it's, it's hard for me to just ignore it because all of these things make me sad and and also the effort is just it's a lot for me to just exist as something that I don't want to be in a world that looks the way it does. And Little Go Blue just wants to highlight those things. It's, it's a sort of like a, uh, an acceptance letter of like, I'm here, um, I'm not happy, but I'm here and I see what's going on.